Welcome back to Wall Street Week. We're talking exclusively with former Morgan Stanley Wealth Management President Greg Fleming. Fox Business senior correspondent Charlie Gasparino joining us now as well. Uh, Charlie has covered Greg's career for the last three decades. Charlie's got some questions of his own. Which is an uh, indication of how old I am, and I guess we're the same age. You know what's, guess, what's great about this is that I've actually covered one of the best investment bankers there was. I mean, you were head of wealth management at Morgan Stanley, but, but people may forget. You were at Merrill Lynch a long time doing deals. You did the BlackRock Merrill Lynch deal. You were the banker behind that, where BlackRock actually bought a huge stake of Merrill Lynch. It got reversed during the financial crisis. The, the other thing that I remember you doing, and there was many others, but the, the, the big thing for you was you basically saved Merrill Lynch during the financial crisis. Uh, Merrill Lynch was about to hit into uh, insolvency. You made a bunch of, I, I guess, last-minute phone calls to, to various players, including people at Bank of America, and you saved the firm. So that was an amazing deal. And that kind of gets me to where I want to go with this. You were there for the consolidation of the industry, of the financial services industry with the big banks uh, in 08. You were there afterwards working at Morgan Stanley in a different capacity in wealth management. Now you're doing something on probably you're going to go out and do something else soon. Uh, you could tell us what that is. But my point is this. Is there any VIG left in the big banks? Can the big banks make the money they made before? Can they pay the people they pay, they, they, like they did in the past? And more importantly, are they going to be important institutions as they were in the past? I mean, Merrill Lynch, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, Citigroup, Bank of America, all were very important institutionally to the U.S. economy. It seems like they're less so right now. You know, Charlie, I mean, one thing I'll say is that a healthy financial sector is very critical for any really high-functioning economy. So it's very important that we've got vibrant financial institutions, not just for the financial industry, but for the entire country. But let's go back down uh, history a little bit in terms of talking about the industry today. Between 1980 and 2006, you had this golden era of growth in the financial industry. And the financial industry went from roughly 3% of the economy in the 1950s to a high of 8 or 9%, and it's still like 6 or 7% today. Spurred heard by the democratization of Wall Street, where small investors are getting into the game as well. Spurred by that, by deregulation, by, deregulation. by globalization. Right. So between 1980 and 2006, the economy grew by five times, and financial sector profits grew by 16 times. So you had growth in top line and revenue that isn't sustainable you know, on, a, on an indefinite basis going forward. And we're now in a very different time for financial services and how they're, uh, they need to respond to the marketplace. Well, so, so top line revenue is hard to get anywhere. And the game now is about capital and capital restructuring and making sure your business model is focused on the right. businesses where you can generate an adequate return on capital. You're going to see businesses divested. Right. You're going to see uh, institutions that, that but, narrow their focus. But, Greg, every business matures. Apple is m maybe maturing right now. Technology isn't necessarily maturing. There's going to be a new Apple, a new technology that's going to have those higher growth rates. What scares me about banking, and I think you know the answer to this as well as I do, is that there, is no, uh, there, are, there are no new players in banks except for very small players who come in and try to do niche deals. Banks are not being created. They're, they're, being, they're either being consolidated downsized, and it's because of re regulation. But what happens uh, in every industry, and this will happen in the financial industry as well, when returns are challenged and the model has changed and the growth trajectory has changed, there will be restructuring. You will see organizations okay. that look different five and ten years ne uh, from now than they do today. Even in technology it happens so, where technology, you know, some gone? companies disappear. You know, you look at uh, the transfer from research in motion and the BlackBerry to Apple. And then Apple, the growth rate might be slowing, and who comes next? So there's a passing okay. of the baton. But are the profits gone, Greg? Are they're they they're gone? not. They're not gone. But the growth, the trajectory of the growth curve is gone. Okay. So the industry has to readjust so and focus on efficient use of capital, very clear business strategies. You know, the ability to grow at rates that could generate returns on capital of 20 or 30 percent, right. which existed for a long time, okay. is not there. You had a good run at Morgan Stanley after Merrill Lynch, a very good run, as a matter of fact, running the wealth management business, brought it back. It's, it's profitable. It's doing well, uh, as well as could be d done in this environment where you don't have a lot of, you know, people, the small investor is not totally in the market, as it was. Uh, where do you see your next move? Um, you see yourself going back to a big bank? The need for leadership, for strategic thinking, for execution 
has never been higher. You know, they're, they're, the opportunity to, to work so with a good group of people in, in many different places as this industry unfolds Where do you see yourself going? You know, I'm working in a very deliberate, methodical fashion because I'm looking at an industry that is ripe with opportunity. So you may do your own thing. I, I'm, you know, I'm not going to commit on one direction or, you know, th that or a big firm. I, I am going to say, I appreciate that, Trevor. I hired him to do what? That's what I want to know. I wanted to do a deal. I hired this guy. Th this industry, this, sure. the financial services sector is going to undergo a tremendous amount of change. So there will be a lot of opportunity for leaders who bring strategic thinking, a proven track record to plug in in many different places. And that's what I'm thinking about. Great answer. You have a future in politics as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> the tie definitely suggests that, okay? I just hope he's playing on our team. Yeah. yeah, Greg, the one thing that we've spoken about, and, and I know that everybody at this table realizes that the millennials, for whatever reason, has shown no interest in being an investor class. You've thought about that. The viewers out there are probably aware of this. How does that, how does the industry attack this problem, and what does it mean? We don't, Gary. One thing about the millennials, uh, and the, the numbers move around, but we all know there are big numbers. There Charlie will be, hates the millennials. Just there so will know. be a transfer of wealth. Have kids I have three millennials. So, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm in, and so does Anthony. So we're in. We're in with the millennials. And there's 78 million millennials. And in about 10 years, they'll be, you know, 40 or 50 percent of the workforce. So they're here to stay. Right. It's the biggest demographic cohort in history. But one of the things about the millennials over the next 20 or 30 years is they're going to inherit a lot of money from baby boomers. Right. And as a result of that, they're going to need to put it to work somewhere. So my view is that millennials will function differently. You know, we've had this, Gary, we've had this joke many times that, you know, millennials... They already function differently. They, they, they vote for Bernie Sanders. I well, mean, they also, they're, they're you the know... the most dysfunctional thing in the, the world. They only text. They're, they're you know, they, they, they don't meet in person as much. They're connected so, to the device. But however they do it, they will need to tap and invest in investing so expertise next, and experience. Huge opportunity for the next, uh, for, the, for whatever the next institution looks like, but, huge opportunity. But you hear what Greg's saying yeah. is the way you deliver them that information right. is yeah. going to be the... Well, guys, stay, guys, stay right there. We'll be right back with more. Exactly.